present Kenneth Williams, Nicholas Parsons and Clement Freud in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it in the chair this week is Geraldine Jones. Well, thank you. Here I am, surrounded by buzzers and stopwatches and a lot of rules which I'll explain as we go along. I also have a list of unlikely subjects for the panel to talk about for 60 seconds each without pausing or going off the subject or repeating themselves. In other words, they have to keep going, stick to the point and not say anything twice. The first round begins with Kenneth Williams. Will you please talk for one minute on how to eat macaroni delicately and without cutting it starting now? <laughs> macaroni, this is a wheaten paste. I think it's important that we define the thing. It's a wheaten paste uh, squeezed into a sort of tube-like shape. And the best way is to take it on your fork and to twist it so that the whole thing is eventually bunched, so to speak, on the end of the fork. And then you convey it to your mouth. In this way, of course, you... That... Nicholas Parsons. Hesitation. Yes, terribly informative, but I think he was hesitating. So Nicholas Parsons gains a point and has 33 seconds on how to eat macaroni, etc., starting now. Well, the art of doing this, of course, is something which has been lost to the younger generation. Brought up on op and populance, they... Clement Freud. Deviation. In what way? Hasn't mentioned macaroni decorously <laughs> ever. <laughs> Could have been talking about frying spaghetti instead of eating macaroni. Uh, fair enough. <gasps> Clement, Freud... <laughs> Clement Freud has 25 seconds on how to eat macaroni, starting now. Ideally, you get a fork in your left hand and a spoon in your right hand. You get hold of this former implement, pierce the macaroni... <laughs> Nicholas Parsons. Hesitation. Yes. No, I, I don't no think No sense of the theatre, has he? Have you noticed? <laughs> I, I, I think you have to make allowances for natural slowness of speech. Clement Freud gets another point and has 14 seconds, starting now. And so having got the macaroni in the spoon, you twist your... Nicholas Parsons. Repetition of macaroni. <laughs> yes, all right. <laughs> Nicholas Parsons, you have a point and 12 seconds, starting now. The famous Italian chef, Signor Gunta Panciato, once said to me, when you get to your macaroni, you've got to stuff it right up the shoulder spot. You've got to get the round part, because if you don't get it round or smooth, you don't get that twisty thing. You've got to have the twisty, because that is so lovely. Fine. Well, at the end of the first round, Nicholas Parsons is just leading from Clement Freud, and Kenneth Williams, so far, hasn't any points at all. Ah. <laughs> now, Nicholas Parsons' turn. Will you please talk for one minute on mumbo-jumbo, starting now? Mumbo, jumbo, jabberwocky, come, thing, this is how. Now, well, I thought come along the branch and step out along the whale. I thought it was, no, you come there, and if what gifts the gift he give us now, I saw it come. And then again, some people say this and some say that, but what would you? Ha ha, not I, but then there is a point which says, come now, is it him, is it him, is it there, is it Williams, is it Freud? No, but come, it, this is a point. And so we step forth, we take our hands, we cup them together, we look up and we look down, because there is a way around. I I thought perhaps this was it, and you said no, and the cup... Clement Freud. <laughs> I didn't understand it. <laughs> Which rule was he breaking? He repeated mumbo-jumbo. What does the audience think? If you think that Clement Freud is right, and Nicholas Parsons was repeating himself, will you cheer? If you think Clement Freud was wrong, will you boo? All now. <laughs> The audience is very much with Nicholas Parsons, who gains a point and has 12 seconds left starting now. Oh. Clement Freud. Clement Freud. Hesitation. Yes. But virtuoso. Virtuoso as Nicholas Parsons is, I think he did hesitate there. Clement Freud. <laughs> Clement Freud has 11 and a half seconds on Mumbo Jumbo starting now. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Hesitation. Yes, such gallantry between you is very perturbing. Um, 
Nicholas Parsons, you have another point and nine and a half seconds starting now. Mumbo Jumbo was a very happy little elephant and as he walked down to the river one day, his daddy said to him, come along little boy. Well, at the end of that round, it's Nicholas Parsons way in the lead, uh, Clement Freud second, and Kenneth Williams still very much behind. Thank you, rabbit in. <laughs> I, I say no more than the truth. Mm. Clement Freud, it's your turn now. Will you talk, please, for one minute on getting out of jail, starting now? The most important thing about this subject is to get into jail in the first place, <laughs> in order that you can start on this exercise. I would like to commend to listeners a number of useful ways of getting into jail. One of them would be to attack Nicholas Parsons with a blunt instrument. <laughs> uh, this would cover a multitude of useful causes, like removing the enemy. Nicholas Parsons. Hesitation. It was indeed hesitation. 31 seconds on getting out of jail, starting now. In order to get out of jail successfully, you must first read the small print in your contract. It usually goes something like this. Subclection... Kenneth Williams. Well, uh, hesitation, but certainly deviation as well, because we're supposed to be discussing getting out of jail, not your contract. Let's face it. I think you're right. Yes. It, it did seem you a say. bit devious. <laughs> Nine, Kenneth Williams now break. breaks spectacularly into the game and has 21 seconds to talk about getting out of jail starting now. The first thing, obviously, to do is to get hold of a very good lawyer. That's the first thing to do. <laughs> then, on the other hand, if you can't get hold of a very good lawyer, then you want to get a rope ladder and a file. <laughs> you can smuggle in nail files in loaves of bread. I know that goes on because I've read all these books about it. And then you saw through bars and lower your... Oh, thank you. We start a new round now with Kenneth Williams. Uh, will you talk, please, for one minute on Hocus Pocus, starting now? Hocus Pocus. Well, this is a very interesting word, Hocus Pocus. It is derived, of course, from the term uh, Hax, Pax, Max, Deus, um, something, ad, ad, ad something or other. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Parsons. I haven't finished. I hate to do it, but I do think you were hesitating, Kenneth. Yes, uh, I'm sure... a lovely bit. <laughs> I I'm sure great things were to come, but too yes. slowly. So, Nicholas Parsons gains a point oh. and has 22 and a half seconds left on Hocus Pocus starting now. Uh, Hocus Pocus, of course, was the chief leader of the witches in the Little Gnome story. And one day, as they were going down into the forest, there was a great big gnome there who said, come along, children, let us go this way. And the tree... Kenneth Williams. Deviation. Nothing to do with Hocus Pocus. Just a fairy story, that was. Deviation. <laughs> yes, I... I happen to be very knowledgeable about Hocus Pocus, and I agree with you, Kenneth Williams. Yeah. So you gain a point you and have 28 our... seconds starting now. Yes, as I say, it was derived from this term, which meant rather the equivalent of when you say today a magic phrase like uh, abracadabra or something like that. It really means Hocus Pocus to take someone on to... Uh, oh. Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> Nicholas Parsons. Ah, uh, hesitating again. <laughs> yes, you really are ruthless, but you gain another point. Well, I let him say it twice before I pressed. <laughs> That's still ruthless when he's losing so sadly. Oh, um, I'll do it you have... well, let him have it back. I'll give that point to Ken no, and let him go on. No, no, we don't want you showing off with magnanimity. You oh. have... <laughs> <laughs> it's something I never do in public, Geraldine. <laughs> you, you have 11 seconds on Hocus Pocus starting now. Well, as I was saying about the children as they went into the forest, they said they were going to cast a spell. It was a real hocus-pocus type of spell, which would bring all the elves out of the trees and the little squirrels running down the branches. Of course... Clement Freud. Clement Freud. He was boring. <laughs> Um, I, I think from the applause that the audience agrees with, with you. Yes, fair enough. Uh, a new rule has been born. You have only one second left, starting now. I won't. <laughs> um, 
And Clement Freud just got that point for ending on the bell. Um, the score now, still Nicholas Parsons in the lead, Clement Freud next, and Kenneth Williams third. <laughs> Nicholas Parsons' turn. Um, will you please talk for one minute on my most miserable moment, starting now? My most miserable moment was probably when I was asked to be on the panel of Just a Minute. <laughs> I had been extremely happy being chairman of this game. I didn't realize how difficult and how impossible it was, and to me it was a miserable time of my life. I have endeavored to come over, come and come back again to conquer this particular moment <laughs> in my time. And I hope that successfully I may have done it, because to speak without hesitation... Clement Freud. Deviation. <laughs> he hasn't done it. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, does the audience agree that it was a bit of waffle? Um, if you do, cheer, and if you don't, boo. If you... Well, the audience thinks Nicholas Parsons was waffling. Clement Freud gets a point <laughs> and has... You've got your right. <laughs> 34 seconds on his most miserable moment, starting now. It happened at 11.15 on the 18th of August, 1944. I was filling sandbags at number 28, Netherhill Gardens, Crowthorn in Berkshire, which is in the southwest of England. When this moment suddenly came up, the telephone rang. I picked up the receiver and said, Hello, this is Croth... Nicholas Parsons. That's even more boring than what I said. <laughs> I think, in fact, that it sounded utterly miserable, and probably because it was so miserable, it was boring. Clement Freud gains another point and has five seconds starting now. I said, Crowthorn, 489 653167. And the Nicholas Parsons. Repetition of numbers. 4567897. No, they were all different numbers, so <laughs> Clement were... Freud gets another point. <laughs> Open favouritism. And has two seconds left starting now. And the woman said, I think you've got the wrong number. Um, well, after my impartial chairing, uh, Nicholas Parsons and Clement Freud are now level, and Kenneth Williams is in second place. Quite <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's, Don't worry, she'll favour you this time. Yes. It's now Clement Freud's turn to talk for one minute, please, on disposing of orange pips, starting now. <laughs> These are definitely the best colour pips of which to dispose. <laughs> I have tried to dispose of many other coloured pips without success, and so I'll confine myself in this brief talk to the subject on the card. The best... Kenneth Williams. Hesitation. Yes. Yes, I think it was hesitation. Uh, a point to Kenneth Williams. You have... 40... 43... <laughs> You have 43 seconds on disposing of orange pips starting now. Well, of course, there are various ways of disposing of orange pips. I have seen some people just spit them out <laughs> at passers-by. You know, actually, some people can spit them out with such velocity that they are capable of hitting people as they pass by. I've seen them get it right in the eye on orange pips. <laughs> on the other hand, some people surreptitiously sort of get them into the hand and then sort of glide away somewhere. You don't really know where it's all going. It might be on the floor, for all you know. And and others, of course, put them into spoons and lower them onto the plate. Some people have a bit of paper into which they put them. But on the whole, I think the whole business of... I didn't repeat there, it was just... <laughs> Nicholas Parsons. Hesitation. No. Yes, I, I think he was beginning to run down a bit. <laughs> Nicholas Parsons... You sound like a bit of clockwork. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Parsons gets a point and has six seconds on disposing of orange pips starting now. The best way to dispose of an orange pip is to put it into the ground and within a short space of time the fermentation press will take... Oh. <laughs> Kenneth Williams, it's your turn now. Would you talk for one minute, please, on being measured for a suit? But you have to talk on this subject without saying two spelt T-O, two spelt T-double-O, and two spelt T-W-O. So no twos are allowed. Being measured for a suit starting now. Well, being measured for a suit can be an extremely luxurious experience. There is a nice feeling, I think, when people say, well, now, just stand here, just slip off the jacket, I'll just measure you across the shoulders, I'll measure under arm, measure your waist. Of course, that time, it's a bit much, because you suddenly realise that you have put it on a bit, perhaps, you see, and that's not very nice. 
I say, oh, hello, he was 30 last time, 31 here. I have to lay off the starch, I think, and the port, uh, lay off the wines and all that sort of thing. That can be very embarrassing indeed. I haven't said two yet, I don't think. <laughs> Clement Freud. Two. Yes, he did. He, he challenged you to challenge him. So Clement Freud gains a point and has 21 seconds starting now. Et tu, Brute. <laughs> Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> Nicholas Parsons. He used two words. <laughs> uh, no, that, two. that's not allowed. He said two. No, he yes, said but I you. specified, you see, how the two was to be spelled. He ne- and Yes, the... but, but it wasn't that too. I know Clement Freud, he doesn't speak Latin normally. <laughs> well, I know that he does. Uh, and even if he doesn't, the Latin is correctly spelled T-U. My education has at last been of some use to me. Mm. And so Clement Freud gains another point and still has 19 seconds starting now. The tailor takes his tape and runs down my inside thigh measurements, which he does with tremendous ability. 31, he shouts, then 33. He then goes to my waist. Nicholas Parsons. To my waist. Well, then. Yes, you're right. Um, you have one point and seven seconds on being measured for a suit starting now. Being measured for a suit is one of the luxurious things of life. <laughs> <laughs> Clement Freud. Hesitation. Yes. Yes, he was fumbling a bit, I think. Um, yes, um, he was um, definitely miss, fumbling. Miss... miss Lady Chairman. Chairman. Madam Chairman. May, may I say, you're, you're so charming and so understanding and so kind to people. I was born with an impediment. Mm-hmm. I do have a difficulty with my speech. I yes, managed to insane. conquer in my youth a very difficult stutter. And luxurious has always been one of the most difficult words. Well, mm. in saying I was charming, etc., you were saying no more than the truth. But I'm not really very sympathetic to people with impediments I in speech. I realise that. Clement Freud has a point and She's hard. two seconds left, starting now. My waist measurement is... Nicholas Parsons. Repetition. He used the word waste before. No, I- I'm going to give it to Clement Freud. He has one second left, starting now. Chest. <laughs> well, at the end of that round, Clement Freud has made a-, a staggering leap to the first place. Nicholas Parsons is in second, and Kenneth Williams, alas, still in third. Nicholas Parsons, it's your turn now. Will you... Okay. Talk for one minute, please, on how to open a bazaar without saying the word the, starting now. Opening a bazaar is a bazaar experience. The whole point is... Clement Freud. The whole point. Yes, he did. Um, You have 55 seconds on how to open a bazaar, starting now. Ladies and gentlemen who have come unto my garden this afternoon, I welcome you all most sincerely from a deep down part... Nicholas Parsons. He's getting so slow, you know, it's obvious hesitation. You can't... Uh, I I agree, you don't need to argue it. I'm surprised you didn't interrupt sooner. (laughs) Well, I was afraid of being penalised. You gain... (laughs) I'm always fair. You gain one point, how to open a bazaar, starting now. You take occasion which is, after all, the thought of... Clement Freud. The thought. Yes, Unfortunately for Nicholas Parsons, Clement Freud gains a point and has 25 seconds starting now. My Lord Mayor, you chaps over there, gentlemen... Kenneth Williams. Deviation, Lord Mayors aren't a bazaar, that's ludicrous. <laughs> um, well, I suppose very posh bazaars, maybe not in general. Kenneth Williams gains a point and has 19 seconds to talk about how to open a bazaar without using the word the, starting now. You get up and you say something which is reasonably funny to open your speech, and then you cut the ribbon and... Clement Freud. (laughs) The ribbon? Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, You have gained a point. (laughs) You've gained a point and you have nine seconds starting now. Any old ribbon and any pair of scissors will do this job handsomely. Ideally, it should be conducted by someone wearing a bright... (laughs) Clement Freud gained another point for finishing on the bell, and he's now substantially in the lead from Nicholas Parsons and Kenneth Williams in third place. Uh, Now, Kenneth Williams' turn. 
Will you talk, please, for one minute on the sport I least enjoy starting now? Well, that's not very difficult for me because I don't really enjoy any of them. And I think, <laughs> I think it's very significant that the real brains of this world are not to be found rushing about on a, on a football field chasing something that's got a lot of air in it and a bit of rubber. I don't think you'll find them there, no. And it's said by some people that sport's a very good thing because it's supposed to get rid of a lot of aggressive instincts. And I think that's a load of rubbish too because it's been consistently proved time and time again that the only way you get rid of such instincts is by the guilt. Guilt, you have to have guilt. Nicholas, <laughs> Nicholas Parsons. Repetition of guilt, and again... Yes, all right. But I was using it in the sense of gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think I can accept that. Nicholas Parsons gains a point and has 26 seconds on the sport I least enjoy, starting now. The sport I least enjoy is playing just a minute. It is considered to be a sport among some because those who play it play it in such an unsporting fashion. Clement Freud. Three sports. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is a fair definition of the team, but it's repetition. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Clement Freud gains a point and has 17 seconds starting now. Basketball is the one I least enjoy because it is intensely boring. 46 men of indeterminate ages line up on either side of a white line. Nicholas Parsons. It's getting slower and slower, and so it must be hesitation. No, I think he was keeping going, actually. There. Yes, um, but slower no, and slower. <laughs> hesitation is more than speaking slowly, especially when you naturally speak as slowly as Clement Freud. So Clement Freud gains the point and has three seconds left, starting now. And the left back passes the right back and passes the centre forward. Nicholas Parsons. Out of his own mouth, he proved himself by speaking not like Clement Freud. So it must be deviation. If he normally speaks slower, that is deviation to speak like that. <laughs> yes, Nicholas Parsons gets a point for cleverness, but oh. not for knowing the rules of the game. And Clement Freud still has two seconds, starting now. Who passes the centre forward? Nicholas he Parsons. He passed in his last speech. Fair enough. Nicholas Parsons, you gain a point and oh. have half a second starting now. <laughs> well, the scores are still Clement Freud in the lead, Nicholas Parsons very close behind him, and Kenneth Williams third. Nicholas Parsons, it's your turn now to talk, please, on what to do when sleep is impossible. For one minute, starting now. The best thing to do when sleep is impossible is to wake up. Having woken up, you want to think of all the most wonderful things that you possibly can. Like, for instance, those wonderful trips abroad. The last time I was in Paris, I couldn't sleep at all, so I got up, I went downstairs, I met a charming Frenchman. Which, as everybody Clement knows, Freud. means when you cannot sleep... Clement Freud has thing... interrupted. Uh, why were you interrupting? Forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very long time ago. Repetition. Yes, in French. Right. Um, Clement Freud, you gain a point and have 38 seconds starting now. You lie awake and you count the pillars in your bedroom and then you count the overmantels. Kenneth Williams. Hesitation. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Very hesitant. <laughs> Kenneth Williams, you have 32 seconds on what to do when sleep is impossible starting now. When you can't sleep, the best thing to do is to have a ceremony. There is no question at all about that. You have a ceremony. You get up and you make yourself a pot of tea, red on a little cloth on the tray, have your little cups and saucers and the milk and sugar all ready, and then convey it to the bedroom on the side table. That's very nice then, because you don't feel it's all dreadful and that you can't sleep. You've suddenly made a little ceremony, you see, and you look out the window and you see all the traffic going along the road and you think, what are those people doing? Where are they going? to it this time of night, too. <laughs> and that, I'm afraid, is where we must leave it, because just a minute has to be off the air in just a minute. Well, then don't mention um, the marks, dear. <laughs> but I... <laughs> have time, alas, to Kenneth Williams' undying shame to mention that in this game, Clement Freud won uh, with a substantial lead over Nicholas Parsons in second place and Kenneth Williams, alas, in third place. Goodbye.
In the chair for this week's Just a Minute was Geraldine Jones. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by David Hatch.